And top of the morning to you. Hey, I'm Michael, or as the grandkids call me, Rue. Thank you for joining me here at the Art Bar for uh, whatever it is that I do. Thank you for being here. I'm glad you're here. I'm going to say hello in just a minute, but I'm searching the desk for my little bee. I know he's here somewhere. You know the bee? Oh, there he is right there. The bee. The bee always write down uh, how many days I've been doing this. Let's see if I can just uh, get to the desk here, and then I'll say uh, hello. It's um, this is This is it. B-55. Holy smokes. I love it when you... Remember when in school when you were doing these little marks? Tick, 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 and then you went, oh, I get to the slash. All right, so here it goes. And, and I did it pretty weak. That's without confidence. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to scratch over it again right there. That's 55 days right there that I've been painting Rude Doodles. You know, I've been painting them a lot more days than that, but doing them live... Uh, uh, for the rest of the world to see. And you guys are the rest of the world. And I'm grateful for you to be here to join me. So let me say hello to a few of you right now. Thanks for all the comments already that are popping up. Ah, uh, Chip, of course you're on your second cup of Java. I knew that would be happening. Morning, Carol. Uh, man, sunshine the last couple of days here in the Southeast has just been absolutely beautiful. Had, uh, had a group of friends over on our deck last night. We kind of set out the chairs and, uh, they brought their own food, picnic style, and um, the only thing that I served was what I call a slap dabber. Okay, and uh, in fact, there's a there's a Facebook page called Slap Dabber. There's not hardly anybody on there, but I did this thing for the camps a few years ago. Bake a bake a homemade cookie. In this case, I purchased the cookies, uh, gloved up, and they could choose peach ice cream, vanilla ice cream, and they get to choose a cookie of their choice. We got this place where we get great homemade cookies and. And it, you know, make fresh ice cream sandwiches, two cookies with a big clump of ice cream. And then on the warm summer night, you just kind of press it in and they go, oh, so I came out with my gloves on and so here we go. And they chose, anyway, great evening with some dear, dear friends that we've been um, hanging out with, kind of a small group study, Bible study for the last couple of years. And um, we'll jettison some of those people, go start your own group. And uh, anyway, it's kind of fun. So that was last night. And it was great to have, have the backyard lit up and uh, the pond running, the frogs were croaking. And, uh, man, I felt like, um, wow, I felt like I was kind of free. <sighs> I took a deep breath and I slept well, but I was tired. But good morning, Carol. Good morning, Belinda. Lynn, thank you. Good morning. Uh, Chip, on your second cup. Much obliged to you, brother. And um, got my cup of coffee here. Teresa, wonderful. Do you know it's impossible to burn hard-boiled eggs? No, but... Uh, um, <laughs> You've done it so far the second time in your life. Good morning, Rue from Margie. Um, Terry ordered my Lammy pen. Okay, Terry, I hope you're happy. And Terry, you know, I should have told you this before you ordered your Lammy. Do you know they make a, a small Lammy, which is only five and three eighths inch long, and then they make a, a, they call it the women's or the, the uh, child's. Pff, who would have thought somebody would have done that? But, but I think you'll be happy with either because it's a lightweight pen. And I think you're absolutely going to love the Lammy pen, okay? Uh, Lemmy doesn't, the Lemmy doesn't even know I exist. So, uh, but I think you're going to love it. It's, it's, uh, and it is another beautiful day here. Um, Margaret, thank you for saying hello. And yes, I sent you an invoice. Take a look. Thank you for, uh, your, your painting purchase. Um, happy hour, Lynn. Thank you. Carolina. Thank you. Caroline. I live in Carolina. Good morning, Neil. And Michael, and the rest of the world, glad to have you on board. Neil, got your book yesterday. Thank you for those of you who purchased. Uh, and by the way, um, got one that's lost in the mail. Hey, um, found the other painting. Don't have a, a final story on this painting that's gone out. It, it was delivered to the wrong house, and the guy sort of went, well, it was delivered here. And you go like, well, you don't know who this artist is. And so anyway, the now the postal person is going over to knock on his door and say, come on. Give us the piece of mail and let me take it two streets over, which is named the same street as your street. Just the numbers are uh, confused. It's like the same verse, second verse, same as the first, if the words are different, figure it out. Um, anyway, so long, long story, but uh, we'll get that painting back. And now I've got a book that's uh, missing somewhere, but most of them are showing up, you know, in this time of craziness and postman running and different, it's hard to believe it. All right, Pat, so Welcome. Hi, I'm Mary, and thank you, Patricia. Glad to have you guys here. I'm going to jump on board and start doing some painting. Here it is. Here's the desk this morning. Uh, got a couple things on the desk I want to show you. What I did yesterday, had a dear friend come and visit me yesterday. 
uh, earlier in the day, we pulled out a couple of chairs um, up on the side of the hill in the shade. Not the side of the hill. It's a, it's a, it's a bank, okay? I live in a, a community, for heaven's sakes. I don't live out in a boonie somewhere. Um, but uh, I, I pulled out, out the pocket knife. And, you know, I'm a guy who has a box with hammers. And, yeah, I do. I have, I have a hammer collection. Uh, I have a box with uh, pocket knives. And I have some really good pocket knives. And then I was... Uh, What's the what's the word um, humbled? But I was also sort of guilted into doing something differently. I was getting ready to to whittle something a few years ago, and I ordered a very expensive for me pocket knife, a pocket knife that I'd wanted since I was a child. I I had looked at this knife. I wanted this knife. I um, I was excited about this knife. So I saved up my money, and I bought this knife. And the knife comes in, and my wife and I and I get some wood that I really love, and I knew what I wanted to make. And, um, I know you're going to be surprised when you know, when you find out what it is. And so I knew what I was going to whittle and this was just to sit and whittle and wander around, you know, kind of doing my hands like this and you can't see. So anyway, I open up this guy's little book that I'd ordered to show me how to whittle this. Cause I wanted some instruction. And, um, he says, the first thing you're going to find out is you don't need an expensive knife. And I'm going like, Oh man, now, now you tell me, I just paid a lot of money for this for this beautiful little knife here at a sheep's foot blade and a little spade blade and a, and a pinpoint blade. And he said, I whittled all my knives through college and my parents were missionaries up in the Amish country. And when I was growing up, I whittled all my knives with a, with a $15 Swiss army knife. And I went, rats. Now you tell me I, I have a pocket. I have a box with six or eight Swiss army knives. Cause I've given my boys knives over the years for Christmas. Anyway. So, um, uh, I just packed my knife up in this little oil wrapper, slipped it back in the box. And I drove down to the local Ace Hardware store, went through all their knives, and I found this Swiss Army knife. And then he said, but grind it differently. So I reshaped the blade. And then I spent about the next day just honing the blade back down. So now that's what I carve with. And, and here it is. You can see it laid on the desk. This is this is my Swiss Army knife. Um, I grind the little ring off because it bothers my hand, you know, the little key ring. I don't know why they put that on there. You wouldn't want this on your keys. Don't hang something that weighs a pound from your ignition, people. You're just going to mess up your switch. There's the tip for today. So it's, I keep this blade the same, except this one is very sharp. And then I regrind this blade like this. It used to come out and be shaped. It almost was the same shape as this blade. See that blade right there? Well, this one, look at it now. See how I reground it and then I resharpen it. So yesterday I take a little twig like this and then I turn it into a little, this is, this is very Martha Stewart or Ina Garden, isn't it? Look, I have one in the oven as my, my son, the, uh, put, producer tv producer would say here's what we start with Let's see if i can get this over where you can see it here's where you go with it here's where you continue to go with it and here's how it winds up there you go so i whittle these little roosters when i'm just sitting around and talking to people this one was an older stick and it just didn't have the life in the tail that i normally like to get the curls that i like to get in them in there I'll finish the head on this one. He's a little short, stocky guy. These are river birch. I have a river birch tree, three river birch in my front yard. So when I trim the limbs off like this, that becomes the rooster. So now look, not only do I paint roosters, I whittle roosters. And this one actually, do you see, do you see the rooster in it now? Of course you do. Look, there's the rooster. Every tree is just filled with them. Who would have thought it? All right. <laughs> um, so the fun part is, is that now I get, uh, I, I get, uh, I get to just sit. And so when I'm sitting, visiting with my friends and, and this is so simple to do, you know, I take this. Yeah, right. Right. It's simple to do. If you do several hundred of them, there's a, there's a Starbucks. It's about a mile. Well, it's not about a mile. It's exactly a mile point five point two hundred feet from my house right here. So I'll take the stick and, and my knife and I'll walk and I'll whittle. And people say, well, you, you can walk and whittle? I go, well, you know what? I can't drive and text, but I can walk and whittle. And I haven't hit a parked car yet. So I just cut into it deep here like this. You should never whittle indoors. Yes, you should all the time. I'll show you this. Watch this. This is a pretty hard stick. So it's, look what's happening already. See? I'm shaping his stomach. And then I'll come in. I'll do his legs. Oh, all right. So there you go. So there's a little whittle lesson for this morning. And this Rue, I'm... I'm uh, I like him. I like his little face. I did it. This is a, with a little bit of watercolor, red and yellow here. And then I put him into a champagne cork. Let me, let me hold up in front of me and you can see how big he is. Here you go. Ready? Right here. There you go. Right there. That's a little roof. You can see that. 
All right. Uh, river birch are self pruning. Yeah, so they are self pruning. Don't use the self prune limbs to whittle on. Cut the green ones off. They whittle so nicely. I'd love to have some white birch to do this with a couple of times. That'd be fun. But my river birch works really well. All right, I'm going to put him out online today. And I think I'm probably going to sell him for uh, uh, the, the great price of $27.50. And I'll put him in a little box. The champagne cork alone is worth, worth that. That's if you like champagne. He sets up just like that. Let's see. You, you can't see him set up. Maybe you can on this book. Here, look. I'll hold him up here like this. Ta-da! There's the roof of your kitchen window. By the way, I've sold a lot of these over the years for 25 and 30 bucks. They just go out. So every now and then, I'll just find a little bitty twig. See this? <laughs> I'll finish him too. All right. Hey, I'm a crazy guy. I got roosters on my brain. Let's paint something. It's showtime. B, uh, B65, thanks for being here today, and let's let's see what we come up with. All right, I need to warm up here. Let's just, uh, you know what? I'm gonna not want to warm up in a book today. I'm just going to warm up on a loose piece of paper with some really uh, damp watercolors. Just let the brushes kind of zing around. Here we go. Let me get my big old head out of the way because I think I'm in the way of some of you seeing this. Let's see if I am here. Let me move this box over. It bothers me. You probably don't even see it, but it bothers me. I'm going to go just a little smaller. Hey, I just shrunk. All right, there we go. I think you can see this page okay. You have two of those roos? Oh, thank you, Andrea. Yes, you do, Andrea. I love it. Um, a rooster tree. Yeah. <laughs> I got. I like my four little little roos in our wine rack. Linda, yes, Linda, I know you have four of those. That, uh, that's really fun, and I appreciate you doing that, so... Some of you have them already. I used to walk a lot and whittle them a lot. And then, of course, you know, now I haven't been too much. I've been making other things lately with my grandkids. I made I made some of these, too. See this? Is this cool? It's a little kayaker. And notice his paddle's loose. So when it rains and my boys play in the puddles, they can uh, they can put these in. My boys as in my grandboys. But now my son has these. So just a little wooden kayak. This, is, this guy's made out of kayak foam. That's a whole other story someday. I'll teach you how to do that. Maybe, maybe not. All right, let's see. Uh, let's do. Let's let's just worry about paint this morning and uh, get to it here. I've got more pens than I need over here. Let me spray my colors a little bit, just to get them to moisten up while I sketch something. Just wet the pans a little bit, not knowing what I'll need. There we go. Um, let me introduce a new pen. Ready? It's called a Finto. Can you see that? F-I-N-T-O. No, it's called, yeah, F Finito. F-I-N-I-T-O. Finito. That sounds like uh, you're done drawing, buddy. I don't know what the word means. Finito. You ought to be beginno. All right, so here we go. Let's let's do a roux that's, um, let's do a roux that's leaning way out here. He's uh, my, kind of like my arguing with the fence post roux. So here we go. He's just going to be really, really stretching out. He's laid out like this. He's fussing with somebody. All right, so that's enough right there. That's all I want to do. Rest of the time, I just want to, I'm just going to use, I may finish a little of that. I'm just going to finish this tail in colors. I don't know what this pen will do. I forgot to test it, so we, we should probably take a look and see. Here's my test piece. Here it is. He's not on here, so let's draw a box. Do three marks in it like this. This is going to be the finito. Okay, give it a little bit of a brush so I'll know how it's going to bleed. Should have checked that before, but what's the point of that? This is clean brush, clean water. Here we go. I don't even know if it'll bleed. Not much. Look at that. Okay, it's not going to do much. It's just going to hold its own right there. Cool. wonder how it works on the other paper. We'll see. This is 140 pound, so we'll see how it works on uh, slick paper. This is more of a... Um, Mixed media paper has a slick surface. In fact, it has it has a touch of vellum in it. So if you want to paint on Bristol board or vellum, uh, your watercolors are going to scoot. You know what I mean by that? By now, you've been watching me long enough to know they're going to take off on you. This is a good one to try that uh, thing where we wet the paint um, I'm, uh, and uh, and then blow it across the, the uh, painting a little bit. So I'm just going to drop some water in sporadically on this guy right here. Just a little bit of water in. 
Um, Coffee and Rue, Luann, Terry, zoom in. Oh, zoom in. You want me to zoom in? Thanks. I always get a couple. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little far out, aren't I? Here we go. Let's let's do this. This is also very light. It'll pop too in just a little bit here. A little more for you, I think. All right. You might see that just a little better. That helps. How, uh, you guys can produce from a distance because I don't see what you see. Sometimes I see a little bitty screen here. The first mark is a hard one. Yeah, it is. You know, if you notice that, that I kind of go like this. You go, uh, my indecision is right there. Once you lay down that first pin mark, everything else is going to follow. Because someone asked me a few days ago, and my friend Chip and I have been laughing about it. He said, Why do you always paint the beak first? And uh, Because that's going to set where the rest of the rooster goes. You follow your nose. Have you ever noticed that? We used to go to uh, this, this camp in Colorado, Buena Vista, Colorado, outside of Buena Vista. And it was called uh, Silver Cliff. It was a Young Life property. And you would hike for about a mile and a half up Chalk Creek. And once you got up Chalk Creek, they would take you to this thing called the gravel slides. And it was about 300 yards. I'm like, that's, that's 900 feet of just slanted mountain, just on fine dust and gravel. It's, of course, you couldn't do it now because of insurance reasons and the ecology and all the things. But this was in the 70s. And we didn't know what the heck we were doing. My hair was like it is now. And so we were, we would get on that thing. And there was one rule for going down the hill. You're going to jump. You're going to, you're going to jump downhill. Yeah. 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 But you're going to keep your nose behind your toes. So you're always following this right here. So here we go. So I'm going to just pick up a little red. I'm going to go in. So if I start with the beak first, that's the hard one. The rest of it's just going to fall into place because he's got to line up behind his head one way or the other if he's a rooster. Now, he could be turning his head around, but hey, eventually it's going to fall into place where he is. This red pops on this, and look what happened there. I hit the water, and it's flaring out. You see that? If it flares too much, I'll stop it, but I don't think I will because I think I'm just going to go drop some gambogi in on top of that and just let that mix. Yep, just like that. I'm just going to let that mix in and let him have a lot of red in his body. Okay, so what's happening right now is our watercolor is just following the water. The, the pigment in the paint is just following the water. Sorry, my hands are right in this when I'm talking. But if what was that old saying? If you tied my hands, the man couldn't say anything. Okay. Found myself listening to a song last night on the back porch with friends, and they were all going, are you okay? And I'm going, oh, I'm sorry, I got lost there in a moment. Some friends of mine have written a song that I think, think is just spectacular. And I uh, was playing it for them. Okay. Wow. Look at that tail. And here's the thing. Okay. So, so look, you're worried about sketching a rooster or sketching anything. And I said, no, there's just one line there. And that just showed me the first stroke that I wanted for balance. The rest of this is I just let the paint do its thing. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to grab a little bit of this blue, which you don't hardly ever see me use this blue. I don't know what blue it is. Maybe it's cerulean. Maybe it's, I'll, I should look these up someday. Nah. If you like it, paint with it. If you don't, the only reason that sometimes you should know paint names is so you can buy that tube of paint again. So, But I keep those tubes. So I'll go in and I'll go, hey, I want this stock number. I want this match number. But for me saying, oh, this is Cerulean 3 or this is, um, you know, Ogburn Crowder Peas. <laughs> I don't know. Or this is... I do like things that have the, the names that sound like, you know, sap green. Like Gambo G, what the heck is that? It's just a bright yellow. Why didn't they just say bright yellow? But they got away from the cadmium colors, which had metal in them. So that's part of it. You can still buy those. All right. Any questions? I'll just pop over here and see. Um, you're, you're trying your hand at landscape. Yeah, man, that's tough. Okay. Landscape can, landscape can uh, whip you. Uh Look at you, Bobby. You're saying you're painting. Bobby, I saw some of your sketches, and I saw some of your, your acrylic painting. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, and, and Terry, my pens are always, oh, this pen that I sketched with this morning is neither a needle point or a ballpoint. It's a felt tip pen. It's got a little bit of felt. To, the, it's a porous, actually, it's called a porous point pen. So it's a harder, I don't think it's ceramic, but it's harder than a felt but it's not as hard as a rollerball or a needlepoint. Uh, uh, be good little detail pen if you're into it. Um, before binders went out of business in Charlotte a few years ago, 
And by the way, it's made by Pentel also. I, I, I'm, I'm a Pentel fan. I just, I really am. So um, if any of you work for Pentel, tell them. Uh, Goober says, hey. <laughs> All right. I need a little bit of this turquoise in here. I like this color. Um, I need a little bit of black in here to accent some of this. It went a little too wild on me, so I'm just going to throw some black feathers in there. And I like to put these little drop feathers here. I'm going to come in with, uh, I'm going to try and leave a little spot right here of white just in the tail right there. See that little back part I just left in there? Okay. And I'm going to get a little bit of this uh, orange here and put some orange down here. Uh, the beak got plenty of paint in here to pick up. Here's some yellow here and just pick up and do the beak out of that. And then it really does match in. That's the other thing about using your painting as the palette. Notice there's only one leg in this rooster. Uh, my dad used to say, Hey, you know why that rooster's standing on one leg? And I go, no. And he goes, cause he's holding the other one up. Boom. Shh. And I go, good grief. Really? Now, why does he do that? Well, he rests. And I go, it doesn't, doesn't make me rest when I stand on one leg. I, I fall over. My wife can do that all day long. She's a yogi. And um, she was doing yoga yesterday here uh, via uh, 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 her phone, the mat all down. Um, she was back in the back bedroom. And, and uh, uh, I think the lady was in Scotland or somewhere. And so this lady drives around the country and just puts her yoga mat out and teaches like a, an hour lesson of yoga. And I'm like, who are you? Well, she's Yaya. She splits the globe. Um, she does splits all over the place. And so I I film them or not film them, but just take a photo and we post them. Yaya splits the globe. That's her. Um, so did you go to Paris to see the Eiffel Tower? No, I went to Paris to do the splits in front of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> uh, she went really went to Paris to see um, Monet's garden. That's why she really went. And we were talking about that uh, journal yesterday. That's kind of why I went there too. Now here's a number seven uh, needle point pintail intergel pen. And all I'm doing now, and if you can see that a little bit, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more here. Okay. So watch this. Just give me a second here. I'm going to come really in tight. All right. You see what's happening? This is what I talk about when I talk about the paint mushroom in a little bit. Just take a look. What's happening there is there's no way you can stroke this. There's no way you can brush this in. There's no way you can make this happen. I just put enough water in the painting before I started. And now I did a little stroke in there. You saw it. It was a clean cut stroke. And now what's happening is the pigment in the paint is following the water trails. And, and it, it just sort of, it, it's like river tributaries. They just start, I think that's the word. They just sort of start finding those little finger trails and creeks. Um, Man, I love that. And you can't force that in watercolor. So don't try to force it in watercolor. But now what happens when I put a pen in it, like here, watch this. I'll take this pen and I put the pen in there and watch what the pen does. It does the same thing. You see what's happening right there? That doesn't look like a pen line. That looks like a paint line. So if I put these little dots in here to give some accent to his underbelly. Now, I've just crossed over from painting for you online to almost teaching online. And I got to be careful because I'm not a teacher, but look, all I'm saying is when you're being creative, experiment with things. If you mess it up, so what? This is a $4 pen and this is a dollar and a half piece of paper. Yeah, it's a good piece of paper. My point is if, if you're not worth a $5 mistake, listen, I went to work for a company, um, uh, one time. And just as I got in, they told me about this big project they had going. And I started looking into it and realized this is the worst mistake we could have ever made at this time. And so I went into the guy that I reported to and said, you guys are making a major mistake here. You know what you need to do? You need to cancel this thing. And he said, well, if we cancel it right now, it'll be, you've been here about two weeks. If we cancel it right now, we're going to lose $11,000. This is a small organization. I said, okay, what happens if we take the trip? And he says, what do you think happens? I said, we lose $30,000. So would you rather lose 11 now or 30 then? And he goes, 
you want to tell them? I said, yeah, I'll tell them. And so one of my first moves was to cancel something that cost us $11,000. But, um, so this is not hardly that big a mistake. You with me? So just go in there and start trying things. And if you don't like it, make a note somewhere in your journal, carry a little journal with you and go, don't ever do that again. Don't run with scissors. Don't try to paint upside down. Don't do whatever. Okay. So learn as you go and learn from your mistakes and move forward for heaven's sakes. Do it. Okay. What I do now is I just take real soft little pieces and I'm, I'm just, you can't see it because I'm so zoomed out. So here we go back in a little bit. There we go. I'm just coming in here now and I'm just letting my brush come in like this. And uh, wow, from nothing on a white piece of paper to this cool looking Rue who is a little bit timid. Can you see how he's standing? Uh, did I know that when I started? No. So here's what's happening. If someone said, hey, would you paint me a timid rooster? I go, well, maybe. Are roosters really timid? Well, somebody, he might be, he might be the second guy in line. He may not be the alpha rooster yet. So he's kind of watching the other guy. So in, in this case, I'd say, well, his feet are probably not stalwart. He's leaning out a little bit, but he's also backed off some. His face is sort of up. See, and so I would think theatrically, how would my face show that? And so as I go through doing that, but other times I just paint the bird and then look at him and go, oh, I know what this bird's doing or saying. You see how you just uh, jump into it? And, and you're welcome, Patricia, for the non-teaching. The River of Life's Tributaries. Michael Ashford, how are you, buddy? Hey, Ash, I thought of you the other day. I'm reaching way over here, if you can see me. I'm just going to get my Aunt Granny snuff bottle. There it is right there. Okay, she hasn't been on this life for a long time. Ash, look at this, man. When you were here, I should have given you this. It's the 43rd Annual Folklore Embellishing Watermelon Wrestling Seed Spit and Cedar Woodland Contest and How We Came In Third. The title of the play is printed on the pen. He and I did it at a dinner theater that I wrote years ago, and he came in um, amazingly and, and started telling stories and uh, got into storytelling in a major way. The man's always been one of my favorite humorists. He's just a crazy man of God. Uh, but uh, we did the 43rd Annual Folklore Embellishment Watermelon Wrestling Seeds Pit and Cedar Whitland Contest and how we came in third. Two roustabouts who uh, traveled on a riverboat and told stories. And uh, when the boat docked on Saturday night, we sold pins because that's how we got our extra income. I bought a banjo with my pins, 25 cents a piece. I'm still hawking pins. Have you noticed? Oh my gosh, you write what's in you. You know, I still, I don't sell pins, but I, some of you bought pins because you're seeing how I use pins. Hey, if you don't carry a pen and a pocket knife, you're fired. I'm not working with you, okay? Uh, you don't write things, as field notes people say, we're not writing things down to remember it later. We're writing it down to remember it now. That's just where life is. So get yourself a good pen that you carry every day in your pocket. Get yourself a good pen that you like to carry, that you like to keep in your to-go bag, whether it's a Lammy or whether it's, uh, who knows? Here's, here's, you know, and I could pull my favorite ones out right now and lay them next to this painting. There they are right there. These four pens right here are just, if I can find that other black barrel pen right here. And and three of those are pen tail. Although there's my other one right there. See, can you see that? No, you can't see it. There it is right there. All right. If you find me somewhere, you're going to find most of these pens. All right. So now if I take this Lammy pen and I go in here with a little black now it's drying, and so I'm just going to get a little. And when the when the water starts to dissipate, now I can go in and put some lines in for a little bit of definition. So that's when I come back. I'm not going to do much more to this rooster. I kind of like him. I'm going to take and put us a little grass underneath. Okay. Don't forget your pocket knife is in your pocket when you go to the concert. Yeah. Um, I don't ever forget that. I check all my bags anymore. I did one time. I was flying through Atlanta. I had my favorite Leatherman with me, and um, they found it in the bag. And I said, I backed up and said, "Give me that thing." And I went and dropped it in an envelope. And I gave a guy twenty bucks standing there. And I said, "Mister, you ever own a good pocket knife?" And he said, "Yes, I have." And I said, "Me too. Mail this to me. Here's twenty bucks. I'll pay the postage and I'll send you." And and uh, you know what? Two weeks later, that thing showed back up at my house. And uh, I kept that knife for 25 years. 
I was doing a project at the Museum of the Bible when it opened. I was there for four days inside building something for the Museum of the Bible in D.C. And uh, man, sometimes as a watercolor rooster painter, you get to do the craziest stuff. And uh, I was building a set for this shop and for Gordon Conwell Seminary and a friend of mine, Dr. Tim Laniac. And, and in the process of that, um, my Leatherman fell out of my bag. And so they called me two weeks later and said, hey, we found this. Does this belong to you? And I said, yes, please mail it because it's going to be a month before I get back up there. And the guy who found it was released from the company, and I think he took it with him. So I never saw it again. So someday I will uh, – and, and that's the one that was given to me by a friend. Anyway, long story. I sound like I need a counselor. All right. And they're not bad. I like this uh, shadow in here. I like this. I like everything about this room. It's time to splatter and move on, man. All right. So here we're going to do a little something you don't see me do very often. And no, that's not spatter. It's, um, it's I'm going to do a little bit of yellow splatter on this. I just felt like it needed a little bit of boost there. Then I'm going to put some sky in there. And I think what I'm going to do is just get a wet brush and sort of just sweep through some of that sky like this and do the yellow also. Get some of the blocks out of the way. Now I might put a touch more back in. Man, I'm going to let him dry a little bit. I'm going to sign him. And I'm going to sign him with this uh, little needle point right here. Roo doodles. Michael, I'm going to put 620 on there. Okay. And let's go to something else. I like this rooster. He's uh, He's got great color. I'm going to show you one more time just what happens on, on the brush marks. Look at this. You see that? Take a look right in here. See, see this is how it just looks like that. Can you see how that looks like a river right there? That just that orange just dissipated into this with the green wash. Sometimes if you're trying too hard to brush things into your roosters or anything you're painting, okay? If you're painting any wildlife, um, even landscape, okay? Hey, uh, those of you who are trying to paint landscape, go go look at cheap uh, Joe, uh, Joe Miller's uh, landscape stuff and his quick sketches. Just go look and see what he's doing. He'll start with some, and man, that guy's a teacher, okay? Uh, he will start with... Uh, all this wet surface and he'll put in some and he'll just go watch this tree and he'll touch the green and it just goes boom and you go that's the top of a tree i see it it's very impressionistic but it's very fun how it comes together okay i'm gonna lay this aside and let it dry a little bit and then uh let me let me this makes me dizzy so uh oh uh let me uh go back to a little bigger screen here all right uh let's see i was gonna do um what was I going to do? Man, I've got all this great paper. And, you know, when you get great paper, you don't know what to paint. So look at this. I bought some hot press fluid. I brought some cold press. Remember, that's the one with the tooth. The other one's slick. This is uh, Fabriano paper. Woo! Aquarella. It's great paper. This is the most expensive paper that I buy. Arches paper is outrageously expensive. And honestly, I think I like this better sometimes than Arches. Um uh, I have a couple pieces of um, Kilimanjaro from uh, Cheap Joe's. Kilimanjaro is wonderful paper, 100% rag cotton. Uh, I paint on a lot of uh, fluid paper, though. Here's the other fluid label. Um, when you see this painting on the front, it's cold press finish. Great paper. This is this is a 9 by 12 Sometimes I buy a 9 by 12 and I just rip it in half and I cut it different ways. Uh, sometimes I buy the small pads. Um and I buy eight by eight a lot. Some of you buy paintings from me that are eight by eight. And I like this size. I love it because everybody has uh, everybody has a foot square somewhere in their house that they'd like a little piece of art. And and why do I do that? Because I want my art to be in people's houses. Um, there's a lady who bought a painting from me yesterday. And she, I found out, is coming by today to have lunch with my wife. She lives in the city. So I put her painting in an envelope. And uh, it's ready for her to uh, scoop up today. And that, that's sort of fun. So I don't think I'll be here and get to see her. But um, I'm off on a mission. There's that painting. I want to put it somewhere safe. I'm going to drop it on the floor. Let's go from there. Okay. Hey, a little six by six square this morning. Let's do something fun. Uh, any questions? Uh, yep. When you lose... Uh, 
Love pins. Now I know more about them. Hey, yeah, make, make sure you get a good pin and a pocket knife uh, wherever you go. Where'd you get that kind of paper? Carol, I ordered this paper from uh, uh, Blick, B-L-I-C-K. It's Dick Blick uh, Painting Supplies. You can get it from Jerry's Artorama. You can get it from Joe Miller. Uh, you can buy it from Amazon sometimes if you just type in uh, good watercolor paper. Arches or Fabriano or um, Kilimanjaro is probably going to come from Ch Cheap Joe's. Um, great papers. Okay. Um, and I think I've mentioned this before. Start on 140 pound and with some good paint. As soon as you can, you know, spend enough on decent paint that you have great pigment, that you have good light, fast colors. Light, fast is that it doesn't fade. It, uh, it holds on really well. And uh, you'll go great from there. Okay. All right. So I got to do a coffee painting today because I've been painting coffee all this week. Uh, and so let's, let's do some little coffee painting and let's do a, uh, let's do a pencil on this one. All right, here we go. A little bit of a Rube Goldberg. I don't know if you know who Rube was, but Rube was the, uh, Rube was the dude who, um, who, he was an industrial cartoonist who drew machines. And you know, I always do these French press, right? Cause I love them so much. Okay. That rams all the way down on this one here. Coffee's coming out. It's tipped over. This one's going up to a pulley. Coming down here, I'm just doing a pencil sketch. It's going to be caught into a funnel. Rube built these machines that had to have so many steps to do simple things. Like if you were going to have a, a guy scratching a mosquito bite on his neck, he would have a man in a canoe with holding a pole with a corn cob, and the 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 duck was paddling and tied to the canoe to get to the corn cob. And so that was pulling him along. And anyway, it just went on and on and on. There was a cannon in him somewhere that fired a cannonball. I have all kinds of Rube Goldberg art. In fact, I used to do Rube Goldberg contraptions to tell stories with. And um, so I think there's another little, so this this to me is, uh, is kind of plumbing at its best here, or maybe I should say at its worst. <laughs> So I'm going to go in just a little tighter so you can see this. I'm just going to do a little Rube Goldberg contraption here. Okay, so I've got a little pot up there, and I've got uh, I've got some plumbing going in here. I've got some little shelves that just sit up here, and there's going to have some little peeps in them. And I could probably just do this in pen and save myself a lot of erasing. But, you know, now that I'm started, we'll see what happens. Here we go. So let's let's clean up the act here a little bit. The pen, by the way, when I'm confident to do it, um, makes me sketch actually a little better than pencil. But also, if you're going to sketch with pencil, sketch like your own thin ice. Just sketch. Don't really bear down so you have a hard time erasing. This is way too heavy, but I'm doing this also so you can see it, he says. Uh, the teacher, or the, the person instructing always has some way to say, cover his... Uh, uh, his mistakes. Okay, so I like this right here. This is going to have a little shelf under it with a hinge. Can you see that right there? Okay, this is just simply a funnel where we're going to aerate the coffee. It was my friend Chip said, listen to this as he takes a sip of his coffee. And I went, man, he said, hey, that's not rude. You're just throwing it into the back of your mouth. That's where you're getting the taste. I have a few taste buds left. All right, so... um and thank you all for being in touch with the coffee company. It's really fun. Um, talked to my other coffee friend yesterday in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And uh, pray for that guy, man. He he manages a camp. And uh, that camp, of course, is not having any campers this summer, as, as a lot of our camps are not. So, uh, So you see what's happening here in the Rube Goldberg? Rube Goldberg is all these little peeps are helping this contraption happen. And these are little shelves. They're all positioned. You know, it's it's all in uh, whatever. This is a little shelf here that's got screw in it. There's a little hinge here that comes up the pot. So this to show your, your pot will tip over, pour the liquid into here like so. Um, goes down here. And this guy here is putting a little cream in it. And so this person here has... Um, that's the place where um, he's going to get to put in. There's a little T elbow in the flow here. 
he's going to have the ability to put in some sugar here. Got an elbow here and plumbing. Got to take time and do all these plumbing fittings. Yeah, but I think you'll see what I'm working toward. And he's going to have a little canister here that fits like this. He's on the shelf over here, making this up as I go. I know that's hard for you to believe, right? <laughs> Uh, Amy says, I grow, I roast, and I sell coffee. Awesome. That's very cool. Every year at Purdue University, there's a Rube Goldberg contest. See there? Mm -hmm. um, is it uh, Toulouse? 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 Is that how you pronounce your name? Uh, man, I love your name. Holy smokes. Toulouse? To Quill. I don't know if that's your uh, pen name on this or if that's your real name. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Listen, uh, these are American Journey paints, Okay. Uh, it's in a Van Gogh box, if you can see it there, Van Gogh. And uh, I think this actually is a Van Gogh color here. And that's why it stayed in there. And this probably is a Van Gogh uh, brown of some sort. Uh, and this purple probably came in these two, or this one did. Everything else I've, I've changed out. I just love these little pans, and I like this small size. And so I, when these run low, I buy tube paint. So in the tubes, and I buy the smaller tubes. Um, of uh, um, it's called American Journey paint watercolor from Cheap Joe's, and that's the paint that I constantly use in here. And here's why: I went through um, man, there there are a million different paints out there. If you like a Daniel Smith, if you if you like uh, Golden, whatever you like, you've got to find your own artistic voice. But when you get something that you go, and I chose this because I wanted my roosters to pop off the white page. The whiter I can get, the bright whiter paper I can get, I won't because that is my white. I don't use many, much white paint at all. Take a look at it. Hardly any use, but look at the blue. Look at the red. Look at the yellow. So there was a whole three weeks where I only took those three colors with me because you can mix every color out of those three. So that's one of the things that I did. So um, those are American Journey paints. You find what you like. For me, the rooster's jumping off the page with this very bold... Um, uh, paint, and I like the way uh, Cheap Joe's paint flowed. It, um, it, it made it work well for me, okay? All right, so we'll finish this little painting over here. So there, all these guys are standing on the shelf, and I think you can see where this is going here. This is probably going to be a little thermometer here that somebody's got to read. So maybe there's another little peep over here, and his his job is he's got a little clipboard with a pen. See how these stories come together, and so um, and he's standing on a little shelf here, and his uh, his little easel. This is his desk right here, and he's got he's got his pen. I love it when I can draw a pen in here, so it looks like he's checking things off on the box. <laughs> and this shelf is held to the wall with just two screws. See there? Two screws. Mechanical. Okay. Um, and then it comes on down, and then we're going to let it, um, we're going to let it do something really weird here. We're going to just do an elbow right here, plumber's elbow, and take it over here. And then we're going to elbow it back to here like this. And I'm thinking the reason I did that is just to add a little humor Look at what I'm going to make right here. You'll get a kick out of this, I think, when you see where I'm headed with it. You know, on the farm art, you use whatever you have. And so this looks like a piece out of a trumpet to me. And this probably looks like the bell of the trumpet. Okay. So you just saw me think of something that came out. And then probably what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just do another arm down to here like this. And then in here somewhere, I'm just going to put the little the little valve on the trumpet that you, it, you know what that's called? A spit valve, right? I'm going to put that right there. So now this is going to come back over here like this. Coffee's going to run back through. And then a 45 down to here. And with a valve right here. Oh, no, I want a gate valve. I want one of these valves that open up like this. And then that's going to go into the coffee cup. Okay. So there you go. So, so uh, what, what I don't show here is the beans um, that I put in here. Now, this thing is, this, this is going to go down to a little pulley and then around and around a little pulley here and back down so that this roux right here, who's waiting on his cup of coffee, 
is controlling the whole thing. So when he pulls this string, this pu this tip pops over. This guy puts in the cream. This guy puts in the sugar. He's checking the temperature. And then uh, here, let's let's do something really funky right here. Let's put a little stand right here. And then let's add another little creature in here. Okay. <laughs> Look, it doesn't have to work. Okay. So it's just how you, and it's the grasshopper. The grasshopper opens the valve that, that the coffee runs in. Okay. All right. So now let's paint that really quickly. All right. I can paint that in 10 minutes. Mm. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Neil says he needs a lab coat. And that's funny because I'm working on some videos with Chip, who you saw in here the other day, who, um, who had on, uh, who wears in some of his videos a lab coat when he's in his coffee room roasting, you know, it's like the white room at NASA. All right. So this little lab, there's a, po I put a pocket in there with a little pocket protector. Okay. All right. So Neil, all right. So let's, let's get a fine pen. And let's paint some of this. And, and when I say fine pen, I think I'm just going to paint with, uh, most of this with my, uh, bamboo brush, which is a little bigger point. All right. So this is where I, I'm going to get some of the pencil out of there because I started with pencil and then I said the heck with it. Actually, I actually want to use a smaller pen, uh, brush if I can find it because I want to show you something here. Well, I don't see it so um, my time is running thin so what am I going to do? Alright, threw it away somewhere. This is what you do when you don't know. Hey, there's the rooster that showed up this morning. I'm going to put him out for sale today as I whittled him yesterday. So he's, he's going to come along today with today's ruse. Uh, oh, here's my brush. All right. All right. Remember the pen that I used? Now watch this. What color is plumbing? Well, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of uh, grayed out. So look at this. I'm just going to go in here with a little dampness in this brush and I'm just going to let the plumbing sort of just let the pen bleed. Now, except for this, what did I tell you it was? I said it's part of a trumpet. So I'm going to put it brass. Okay. So a little bit of that yellow is going to look like brass. That's going to work well right there. And then the ones that I just want to be regular plumbing, I think this has to have just a touch of blue in it because uh, if you're working in a true scientific lab, this is going to match. It's going to be the cream. This is the sugar. It's going to be just a touch of uh, sap. Excuse me. I think that's Sag Harbor Gray. Um These are sugar cubes. I'm going to put them in a turquoise bowl. They're all standing by there. I'm going to put the, the notebook, uh, just a touch of, um, touch of off color white. I like his, uh, to make that lab coat stand out. I'm just going to paint the roux like this. And then his head there. He's in a little lab coat. The back side of this coat is open over here like that. Okay hard to see his collar but it's up there's there's a, there's his lab coat right there um and touch that with a little bit of this white and just let it kind of come in like that <laughs> all right good suggestion neil appreciate it all right let's see uh peep antics wonderful do a book of rue ante rue ante i didn't think you could pull that off <laughs> Thought you suggested it a little late in the game, didn't you? Nah, I'll make it work. That's the fun part about experimenting with uh, with watercolor. You know, it's it change on the fly. And, and look, what am I gambling here? I'm gambling some of your time, a cup of coffee, um, a, a few stories, and I'm gambling a piece of paper, six by six, and my time. Um, and I dropped my brush again, and I hate it. It went flying across the floor somewhere. What I really need is a couple trained monkeys that I can just go brush and they go end it out. I got some frogs out there, but they're not smart enough to come in. I need I need some chimpanzees. All right, little wooden shelves these guys are on here. Maybe even this little shelf up here is black. That that goes in. Um, what do you know I do about see I have some things that I just reach for. I love uh and the reason I do this bottom in turquoise is because I like the way it pops against the white. But it also reminds me of my wife's bottom that she started with years ago that was had turquoise in it, which just made me always laugh. I'm thinking, like, I'm going to need a man's cup of coffee. Here's some in the turquoise beaker. Um, 
I love that sort of thing. It just makes me sort of laugh at life because we take ourselves, uh, what's that old line? Why do angels fly? Anybody know? Why do angels fly? Not now. See, my carrier settings have come up again. What's the matter with you? Me and the carrier? Who is the carrier? I know. I don't want to know that, do I? Uh, why do angels fly? Does anybody know the answer to that question? Because they take themselves so lightly. <laughs> okay, so uh, so now my coffee cups mostly are the same color of my coffee cups. There it is right there, okay? They're a little bit of that Sag Harbor gray with just a little wash in them. Um, let's see if I can get a little more uh, dark in some of this plumbing right here. Here's a little bit right here. Just take some of that over, darken it up just a little bit. This thermometer is going to have a little red dot in it and then a little up to here. There we go. See, just with a touch of red, it made that look like a thermometer. Remember, we're talking theater here in some of your paintings, okay? And look, if you were going to write a children's book, which I did, by the way, and thanks for some of you for owning it. What a segue. I should be in sales. Um, <laughs> hey, seriously, um, um, if you're going to write a children's book, you should illustrate it yourself. And that's exactly what, what I did, okay? Uh, it took me 10 years to write that book because... It was so expensive to pay an artist that uh, I thought I should just do it myself. And that's not arrogance. That's uh, that's budgeting. Big difference, okay? All right, so um, I think you can see what's happening here with this. Um, now, what I do now is I'll come back in with my pen. I like these little brass valves over here. I'm going to just go ahead and give them a little top off right there. A uh, piece of this trumpet. <clears throat> Don't you think I forgot the grasshopper? I'm going to give him a touch of sap green. Here he is right there. And a little little red valve. He's going to be turning this red gate valve when the when everything is, when this guy gives the go-ahead. Now, what he's going to do to give the go-ahead is right here on this little shelf. Suspended. Let's see how much time do I have. Oh, yeah. This will be fun. Um, here we go. Right here is, um, he's holding in this hand, this ring, okay? And this ring is tied to, let's see if I can do this. Haven't drawn one of these in a long time. Uh, let's see, it goes down like this, with another bell around the bottom like this. It's got a cut out in the side, it's fastened to here. It's got an arm that comes down like this to a chain. <laughs> that's a silly laugh. I don't know why I do it. It's a brass. Uh oh, that's red. I almost touched the wrong color. Of course, my. Uh, I think you can still see see everything that's happening here. I'm sorry. This is a small painting, and I'm doing my best to keep it in line. But uh, my best may not be good enough for some of you. Okay, there we go. Then you'll just have to. Uh, all right. All right, so there, there it is. See what happens? When he says everything's okay to go, temperature's right, he pulls this ring, the whistle blows, the grasshopper turns on the valve, and the coffee drips into the cup, and we have coffee ready to drink. Okay, so there it is right there. there there's the whole kit and caboodle. All right. Um not overpainted, uh, underpainted. Um, this this would go back. <laughs> now I'd come in here and I'd put some detail in, some little lines and some thread marks, maybe some wear and tear on the little uh, little pieces of equipment, some little lines like this that show like it's been under use, some little dots in the sugar cubes, um, one lump or two, clean up the eyes a little bit on my peeps, clean up their feet. Uh, Coffee station, 80, number 82. Okay, I'm going to sign this right here. Rue Doodles 620. <coughs> Excuse me. It must have been something I ate. No, I think it's something I'd like to eat. I need to go have breakfast. 
All right, this is, this is a little this spit valve and needs a little spot of red on it right here. And I've about painted two paintings today, which is a little shy of what I normally do. But I've also been making up this Rube Goldberg as I go. And um, I want a little bit of blue in the glass. Look at this. Just touch it right here. That's too much. I'm going to go get knock some of that out. And then just do a little bit of blue in the glass. I'm going to do a little bit of red in these pulleys right here. Can you see this? Sorry. Right there. Just a touch. I, and here's what I do. When I just need a touch of paint, watch this. A, a kind of a damper brush. I'm hitting it on the, the blotter. Do, 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 the paper towel. And then, I, and then I'm not going into the deep well of the paint. I'm just going right here along the edge. And I'm just grabbing a tiny bit. Today I'm painting with, I painted this whole painting with, with this little low uh, uh, dagger brush, see how the see how the end of it's shaped? Can you can you see that right there? Okay, and now I'm just going to go in right here and just touch a little bit of red in this in this pulley, not too much, and then same here and same here, and then this string probably has a ring in it here like this, and it's tied off with a loose end. These are the little details that make me laugh. Um, I don't know if you appreciate them, but as an artist, I appreciate them because they, they, uh, I find humor in the fact that you look in and you go, um, uh, there, there's a little line there. Did the artist mean to put that line there? Yes. If you buy a painting from someone, even though he stumbled onto some, the looks of it, he probably meant to leave it in there. In my case, I do. Okay. So I want to just go back in and get a little more coffee kind of spilling out here. Maybe some splashes going over the edge. Watch this. Who said some of the stuff didn't leak? Okay. It's a coffee station, right? So you're going to have coffee around. You're going to have a little bit of leakage going on, some splatter. Um, Neil, I like the coat. Thank you much. I'm going to go ahead and just touch a little more white on there like so. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to go in with a fine pen and I'm just going to put an R right there on the pocket. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> it's time to go home anyway. Wait, I live here. Here we go. Hold on. All right, so there's the painting for today right there. So it's a Rube Goldberg. Um... It's a Rube Goldberg coffee station. So this peep decides he wants a cup of coffee. He pulls this ring, which of course, uh, someone, someone had to be up here in the top uh, who, oh, here it is. Watch this. Maybe there's, maybe there's two. Oh, there's a little sign here. Okay. So we're working backwards now. One is for ready. Two is for poor. Three is for temp and four is for enjoy okay so there's a little sign on the wall right there we need to just make a little sign out of that okay it's tacked to the wall with uh not with one nail there it is right there so that means i have to put one more little shelf right up here yep if i go over time by a minute or two who really cares right okay so i've got this peep up here way up in the top so i'm adding him in so am i working backwards yes how fun is that to just be creative? And he's reaching out with his foot, paw, claw, who knows what it is. There, I grabbed that Chinese brush just by mistake, huh? That's not really by mistake. That's what I grab all the time. Uh, I love painting with those things. I'm going to grab a little bit for his beak. Okay, so he's the guy who um, he's the guy who pushes the plunger down. And, and maybe he's got this... Uh, He's got a little suction cup to push that with so he doesn't have to lean over too far. OSHA, you know, you got to be careful about OSHA. Um, you have to make sure all your safety precautions or safety procedures are in place. All right, so this guy's controlling it all right here. He's the guy, let me show you what he's got right here. Look at this right here. He's got, on his wall right here, he's got the time clock. There's the time clock. So he's the guy that's watching everything, okay? And he's also got probably, there's the power cord going into the time clock. Uh, that time clock is going to have a little bit of a green 
a green face. You know, you remember those when you, hey, I used to work at UPS. Holy smokes. Yeah, I'd go in. I had the breakfast shift at UPS. I sorted two trucks from New York, and my shift started at, uh, I'd go in at 3.45 in the morning, 4.45 in the morning, and I'd cut the seals on the trucks and then unload those two trucks. And so I'd have to punch, punch in, punch out. All right. Uh, talk about a story told on this one. Latisse, thank you. Better paint a couple of these, Kim says. Okay, so there you go. There's coffee station number 82. And what was 82? I'll tell you what 82 was. 82 was my number in high school. I was a tight end, but also quarterbacked with number 82. So it really confused the other team when I shifted from, from uh, tight end uh, to quarterback. They'd go, what's number 82 doing quarterbacking? All right, so uh, last talk through. Here we go, and I'm out of here. He wants coffee. He says, well, it's on the clock. When the clock's ready, that's 857, by the way, is what I put on there. Um, 857, that's when I start painting. He pulls the ring. Um, doop, one blow, ready. He pulls it. He plunges it. Two, it pours. Three, he adds the milk. He adds the sugar. He checks the temp, blows it again. The grasshopper opens the valve, and we, we've got it ready to go. So I need a little bit of uh, something right here. I need a little bit of this. Milk just spilling over the edge right there. There it is right there. And I'll put this pin mark back in. All right. That's it. Here's the other piece. I will uh, write the caption on this piece. So I'm going to list three pieces today. I'm going to list my little whittle rule. There he is right there. Uh, he's whittled out of river birch. Uh, stands about... I don't know. This place is such a mess. Who could keep up with this? I need... Where's that monkey with the broom? I don't know how tall it is. That's five and a, oh yeah I do six inches see there five and five and three quarters inches and then this one will be posted and this one will be posted with comment so all right there you go folks hey enjoy and the reason I tell you that is because I tell you roosters are a way to have fun and here's what's going to happen if you frame this at your a coffee bar people are going to come in and they're going to go what and you're going to make up your own because you can't even hardly read this but you're going to say well here's a steam whistle I love steam whistles by the way, my next book coming out, which is called Rubots, has a uh, rooster that has a steam whistle. And so uh, it's the farm alarm, right? You got to have a farm alarm, Rue. All right. Hey, blessings on you guys. I will see you tomorrow morning, Thursday morning. Yes, I'm painting tomorrow morning. And uh, God bless, um, in the words of Red Skelton, and may God bless. And I uh, will look forward to seeing you here. I'll answer. Skeeter Powell, thanks again, buddy. Good to hear you. Michael Ashburn's on here today. Touch base with Skeeter Powell. Morning, y'all. Suzanne, glad to have you. Belinda, thank you. Amy, uh, uh, thank you. Is your coloring book and Rubots one and the same? Mm, yes. The coloring book that's coming out and Rubots is the same book. It's Roosters and Robots. I've created the term Rubots. They're coming together. It's my explanation of why I used a rooster and connected it to a, uh, a, a, a simple piece of farm equipment. Sometimes not so simple. Sometimes sort of Rube Goldbergish because this is my style. This is my goofy creative style. It's a storytelling style. And so then those have gone together. Uh, but I, there's an explanation. But there's also a box for you to draw some of the parts of a robot or a robot, but a robot in this case, uh, make your own stabilizers and wire connectors, just exactly what you see here. It wasn't until I got here that I realized this should be parts of an old trumpet. And that's the fun in finding these things. There's a couple things missing here, <sighs> right here. There, there should be something right here. Um, I'm going to put it right here. Look, another little fitting. It should be it should be this right here. It should be a steam gauge. And uh, it ought to have a little bit of a, a, a warning sign on this side right here. A little red. It ought to have a touch of blue in it like this. And that's good to go. And then the rest of it is just whatever comes out of this brush right here, which is just water. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to just touch it with my blotter. And that's going to be the steam valve. See what I just did? Wow. Look, let me show it to you. Close up. Ready? Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. All right. The camera isn't focused yet, but when it does, you'll see all the little working pieces of coffee station number 82. But uh, so valves and all this stuff. And so then you've got fine line markers on the paper to, to color in the robot. I went back. 
I'm ADD. Thank you guys for hanging with me. I appreciate you. Got to go out of here on a sound today. Let's see. Let's call it this right here. I'll answer any emails I can.